My name is Ojinga Carr. I'm originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, but I've been a Memphian now for seven years. When I think about the team aspect, that's something that's always been a real effect in my life. It's always been something that's been a big part of what it is that I've done. You see, I hit the lottery with my parents. My parents were there for me. I played team sports all the way from six years old all the way through college. And my parents never missed a team activity, an activity that I had my entire life. And so I wanted to take that when I got into corporate America. I wanted to take that team aspect that I learned from team sports and I learned from the support that I got from my parents and to be able to put it together and be able to do something to change the world. You see, when I was in corporate America, we would just take our employees and just take them and throw them out in the water and see if they could swim. And when they drowned, we just go back and get to the next person. And so I saw how damaging that was for the employees who were there. But also it was damaging for us just as an organization, as as people. And so we created a movement that we like to call Team Crushing It. What Team Crushing It is, is that we're crushing our goals faster than we ever thought we would get there. We're crushing those obstacles that are in front of us. And we're crushing life. And I just love the opportunity of getting a chance to be with my people and to be able to run these events and to be able to have the changes that we see happen and just to be a small part of it. Well, we talked about really only one of those limiting factors that limit us. And so I wanna talk about the secondary factor that we really need to, that we, that we do, and that is discipline or the lack of discipline, honestly. If we're not disciplined on a daily basis, if we don't walk in our walk, then we're just gonna be wandering somewhere. You're just wandering all over the place. You're just drunk as like this is all over the place. It's going, don't even know we're going back this time or whatever as far as that. And so we have to make sure that we can show and understand and have discipline, okay? And so I wanna share with you really quickly my morning routine. And this is my morning routine when I am on. And when I know that, and I, when I get this morning routine, I know that I'm gonna have a great day, okay? Now these things that we're talking about here, I do before I ever touch my phone in the morning, all right? How many of us wake up in the morning, what we're doing is just laying here in the bed? <laughs> on the face back, anybody gonna be honest and say, you know it, all right? Many of us do, we're addicted, we're sitting here, we're, what's going on, oh, this happened, oh, different things as far as that. Okay, and, it, and what it does is that it derails your day. It derails your day. It's your day. It's your time. We started this morning talking about the fact that it was our time. You only have one October the 25th, 2018, only one. You got to spend it here. You rocked it out, you spent it here. You guys brought energy here today and you were here and you were present. Do you know what that means to be present in your day? To make sure you're putting your day together? And so I'm gonna have a great day, but I have to do what's called the four 20s. So these 20s that we do on a daily basis, if I'm gonna be great, I have to do this, all right? This is before I ever touch my phone in the morning. So, first 20. As soon as I get up, I have water sitting by my bed and I'm gonna drink 20 ounces of water. So 20 ounces of water as soon as I wake up. So if you've got a goal of 100 ounces in your day, you were already one fifth of the way to your goal, you just woke up. And just take it and drink it, just take it down and do it, okay? And the more you force it, the better it'll be, honestly, I promise you, okay? It's not that way in most things in life, but if you force yourself with it, the better it'll be, okay? So 20 ounces of water, so the Limitless Summit is a part of the Team Crushing It Move. This has been our second Limitless Summit that we've run here in Memphis. We run three events every year in Memphis. So we run, the first event that we ran is called the Breakthrough Accelerator Bootcamp. It's about how to develop those breakthroughs in your business, in your life. How is it that you see that spot and that you know to be able to figure out that your breakthrough is coming, that it's now it's your time, and that you can be able to create it and be able to do it. 
And then we have the I Dream I Achieve Academy Live event. So my first personal development product I created was called I Dream I Achieve Academy. And so we continue to keep updating it. And it's about how do you achieve your dreams? You really take, and we look at, I took my HR experience and I put it over to the personal development side. So I was like, what is a job description for yourself? What is it, if you're writing a handbook for yourself, what would it look like? And so at I Dream I Achieve Academy Live, we take people through that and being able to figure out how do we really step ourselves up on the personal development. But Limitless Summit, that is the summit of what it is. It's about being able to create that limitless life. And so it's based upon my book, Your Limitless Life. And we talk about the 13 key indicators in order to be able to create a limitless life. So we have three events. But we, what we do is we want to bring people into Memphis so they can realize what a great town Memphis is. Um, I've fallen in love with Memphis from being here and being now, being a Memphian here for, for seven years. And so what I wanted to do was bring high quality, terrific events here to Memphis. And that's what we've been able to do and to bring in some of my friends to help train on the things it is that they're experts in so that you can get just the most amazing transformation in a short amount. How we break those chains. So, we discover those limitations. We discover the things that are holding us down, that are limiting us, and they're pulling us. It's time to break those chains. It's time to break those chains. Good prayer. So, you heard me yesterday I'll tell you a story about when I was in high school. And when I walked in, and my mom was crying, and my sister was crying, and, um, you know, my dad was upset. My dad was old school. You know, I only saw my dad cry twice in my life, literally. Um, one was when my great-grandmother passed, who raised him, um, and we went to the funeral. And I was shocked. I was like 14, never seen him cry before, ever in my life. And it wasn't because he was a hard dude as far as that. It was just that he really believed in, in the, the, way that he was, the way he was raised that men didn't really cry. And so that is something that I had to kind of work out as well for myself too, as far as like, how is it that I deal with emotions? How is it that I deal with the people who are around me? How is it, I think about that. See, we work with people from where we are. But one thing we talked about, remember yesterday when we talked about acknowledge, as far as those three A's, you have to acknowledge where someone else is coming from as well too. And so you gotta acknowledge where they're coming from and where their background is and what it is that they do, okay? And so when we, that's the best way in order to be able to communicate to people be able to know is to be able to acknowledge. Acknowledge where they came from, we speak to their ambition, and we do it with affect or emotion. Alright? And so that's a big thing I want to be able to break those chains. So I told you that story about my mom, but I didn't tell you the end of the story. So, it was bad. She ultimately ended up having to have a double mastectomy um, for the breast cancer. And a lot of people would have given up at that time. She went through chemo, and you know she was always happy about her hair. But she lost a lot of her hair to the point to where they they just had a finger wave, this finger wave of her hair um, with it. So she lost a lot of her hair. But my mom told me something that sticks with me to this day, and she said, "When you feel your worst." You have to look your best. Mm -hmm. So the days that she was feeling the worst, and the days that it was the most difficult, she made herself up more. She made sure that she dressed nice. Mm -hmm. She made sure that it was. So it was her vision and push through that really, I, I, I hit the lottery with my parents, man. I hit the lottery with my parents. My dad taught me how to be a hustler. Mm -hmm. He was always an employed preneur. My dad taught me from a very young age that the fortune is in the follow-up. Mm -hmm. All right? If you follow up with people and you do it, then you know the fortune is in the follow-up in order to be able to create it, in order to be able to do it. But my mom gave me this really loving side because she's never met a stranger. She takes everybody in. Um, the only reason why she's not here today because any of you who've been to my events before know that my mom is here at every one of our events working the front table 
and, and, and doing so because because that's that's the type of support she does. She had a minor surgery. She's doing she's doing fine. We've run five events and this has been the first event that she hasn't been at. Okay. And the rest of the story with my mom is that now she's been battling and moving through and she's been kicking cancer's ass for 27 years. Um, I was unlucky in high school. I had my mom for algebra and geometry. I took them both at the same time. You give me anything and I'm like, hey, I can do it, but I don't really want to teach it. <laughs> and so I wanted to find a way to be able to help people in another way. And so she really pioneered a process of group learning that people, she just still goes out and teaches seminars on to this point, um, where we get into classes and um, you'd, ha you'd have four people in groups. Um, and at this point in time, that wasn't really, uh, that was kind of unheard of um, in the classroom where that we were in groups all the time. And so she put a high, a low, a middle, and a middle together. Everybody would pull themselves up and be able to do it. And you could understand those things and be able to do it. So when it comes to frameworks, I get that from her. As far as like creating frameworks on how we help people, it's what, it's what I want to do, all right? And so there's a framework in order to be able to break that chain. We call it the success recipe. Dream, believe, work, achieve, repeat. Dream, believe, work, achieve, repeat.